Welcome to the Amplicon Coffee Break webinar series. We have all seen the move towards automation in our workplaces and the COVID-19 pandemic is speeding the pace of this change. The Amplicon webinar series is designed to give you a stepping off point in understanding how you can automate your work process whilst integrating and adopting big data and cloud computing. In response to the shift to home work in following lockdown, we discuss how to apply best practice in your cybersecurity. Today in our first session, we start with an overview of existing pr production processes and follow on with simple to understand steps in how you could develop a secure automated system. So let's get started. In this session, I will be covering what is process automation, programmable logic controllers, human machine interfaces, and supervisory control and data acquisition systems. Here is an example of a modern automation line. You will see that people are scarce in this modern factory, as human intervention is now something that is required less and less. This is because nearly all of the processes are computer controlled, with some sections that even utilize robotics. Humans are mainly used now to oversee operations and to check that the machines are behaving. But I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, how do we get to this sophisticated, fully automated system? And I imagine this is especially true now with the current spacing restrictions that COVID-19 demands and the impact this could have on you, the output of your factory. Let's take a look at where the manufacturing businesses start out. When I say process automation, what do I mean? The official definition is, process automation refers to the use of digital technology to perform a process or processes in order to accomplish a workflow or function. But in reality, it is purely automating a process that is normally done by us, a human. Manufacturing businesses will normally always start in a home kitchen or garage. In fact, some of the biggest businesses of today started off from these humble beginnings. Here are some you may know of. The Dragon's Den star Levi Roots started making his reggae reggae sauce in his home kitchen in Brixton in the 1990s. His business is now worth over 45 million. The Patak family started off their business in a small suburban kitchen in the 1960s, making Patak's Indian spice pastes. This sold for a cool 200 million in 2007. And this next company need no introduction as I'm sure everyone knows about their small beginnings from a garage in California. This business was started up by a certain Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. Of course, I'm talking about Apple. They currently have an estimated worth of over $1 trillion. I would like to take you all the way back to the beginning, starting with a very basic process purely to explain to you in a simple way the path between a basic manual process and a fully automated process line. To do so, I have invented a startup business who make organic jam in a small home kitchen. It doesn't matter in which sector you operate, the same concept applies to all. Going back to my imaginary business, I have listed some very simple steps of how the delicious jam I sell is made in my humble home kitchen. Here, I will demonstrate how labor intensive a basic process could be. But before I start, please do not take this as a valid recipe, as I'd not like to take the responsibility of poisoning everyone out there watching. Firstly, the fruit would be washed by hand in a bowl of water. Once cleaned, the water would be drained by hand and any bad fruit removed. Add the raw ingredients to the pot and then put on the heat. Bring to the boil and then reduce the heat to the optimum temperature using a thermometer while stirring the mix. After 20 minutes, remove from the heat and sieve the jam using a strainer. While still Malibu, pour or spoon the jam into sterile jars and then add lids and allow to cool for 12 hours before sticking the labels on. Finally, place the jars into a box. 
As you can see, this whole process is very time consuming and could only ever be used for small production runs. Let us imagine that the demand for our jam has started to take off and that we cannot keep up to satisfy all of our orders on time. We are having to disappoint customers and are losing some big orders. What can we do to increase production? Firstly, the business would have to move from the home kitchen to something like a much larger commercial kitchen. This will give the business more room to achieve greater production and storage capability. To produce larger quantities of the product, the business will have to purchase some new semi-automated machinery. For example, a new larger kettle style cooker could be purchased. This would automate the heating, timing and stirring of the product and increase the capacity from 15 litres to 60 litres per pot. Hand sieving would still need to be done before moving the mix to the new semi-automated filling machine. This machine would require the ingredients to be poured into the hopper with sterile jars placed underneath. A foot pedal would be depressed to open a pneumatic valve and then released when the jar is full to close the valve. Next, the jars will be moved to the lid fitting machine. Here an air ram is used to produce a set amount of pressure to seat the lid firmly onto the jar. The jars are then left again to cool for 12 hours. Finally, the labels are stuck manually onto the jars and placed into a box. In this scenario, the manual operation has been greatly reduced and cooking capacity improved, leading to increased productivity. Additional staff could also be hired to operate the machinery. This would increase the total output of the business significantly. But semi-automation still has its capacity limitations. Let us now imagine our business has been contacted by several major supermarkets wanting to stock our product. Would this mean our, this would mean our production would need to increase 50 fold? What can we do to increase the production by such a huge amount? Again, our business would have to move, this time from the commercial kitchen to a large warehouse to accommodate larger machinery. To produce the huge quantities that we are now being requested, the business would have to purchase fully automated equipment. To begin with, the fruit would be fed manually into the process line where it enters the washing area. Here, all of the fruit is automatically washed by machine and fed onto a conveyor. It is then inspected by hand to remove any bad items and repacked at the end of the line. We have also purchased larger kettle pots, which has massively increased the cooking capacity in the factory from 60 litres to 600 litres per hour. Like in the previous semi-automated system, this machinery would fully automate the heating, timing and stirring of the product. The new kettle pots, though, have additional capabilities. Firstly, they are connected by pipe to the hoppers on the automation line. Secondly, they have inline strainers fitted that sieve the cooked product as it is pumped. Let's take a look at the fully automated line. Here we start our automation journey. The jars will be manually loaded onto the conveyor. They would be assembled into single file before they enter the fully automated washer. This machine uses high pressure boiling water to clean and sterilize the jars. Once washed, the jars are inverted to let any excess water drain from them, and they exit the washer and are moved on by conveyor. In single file, next to the, the next station is the automated jar filler. The filler's hopper is heated to ensure the large quantity of jam stays malleable. The jam is filled to an exact level using time to flow ratio sensors. As the jars exit this process, an automated fill level and foreign object check is performed using cameras with artificial intelligence. This whole process is done in seconds and would have to be sewed down to see by the naked eye. Our filled and inspected products now move on to the final stages of our automation line. Each filled jar passes through a line of flame heaters to ensure sterilization. They would then move on to the capping process. 
Here the lids are preheated and then fitted securely to the jar. The jars are then fed into the cooling section where they are sprayed with water. As the jar cools, a vacuum is created, which is why you get that satisfying pop when the lid is removed. The jars would then move on to the labeling section where the labels are attached by machine and moved onto the packaging area. Here, the jars are removed by hand and placed into boxes to be sent to the warehouse. I have explained how full automation can increase the productivity and capacity of an operation, but I'm sure you would have spotted that there are still many areas where manual work is undertaken. Most of these areas could easily be automated with robotics. This though would require a very large capital investment. This factory would also be capable of running 24 hours a day, seven days a week when production demanded. But how is this automation controlled? Here we see a fully connected automation system. The process that my imaginary business has built up would, would have all these elements integrated. As I mentioned earlier in this webinar, I'm covering three pieces of this puzzle, programmable logic controllers, HMIs, and SCADA software. Let's start with the programmable logic controller. Each process would normally be controlled by an individual programmable logic controller, a PLC. A PLC is an industrial solid state computer that monitors inputs and outputs and makes logic-based decisions for an automated process or machine. They are robust and can survive in harsh conditions, including severe temperature ranges from minus 40 to plus 70 degrees and extreme moisture using a PCB conformal coating. They use cross-platform programming language, meaning regardless of the manufacturer, they can be programmed without much difficulty. PLCs though do have disadvantages. They do not perform well when handling complex data that is written in C++ or Visual Basic. PLCs can read signals from different sensors and input devices, like switches, timers, positioners, etc. These inputs can be in either digital or analog form. Its outputs can be used to control external devices, such as motors and solenoid valves, which, would, which will complete the automated system. And again, the outputs can be in either digital or analog form. Syncing and sourcing are two important terms when discussing input and output connections of a PLC. Syncing is describing the common ground line and sourcing is describing the positive line. Both syncing and sourcing inputs and outputs can only conduct electricity in one direction. Relays are one of the most common output connections. A relay can switch either AC or DC signals, but they are slow reacting. They can now switch large currents. PLCs use the IEC 61131 standard. Under this standard, there are five programming languages. Ladder logic is one of the most commonly used PLC languages. In it, symbols represent opening and closing relays, counters, timers, shift registers, and mathematical operations. Rules in the LAD logic are called rungs. Each rung has a single output, but an input can be found in more than one rung. Function block diagram. This describes the functions between input and output variables. The functions are represented by blocks and connect inputs and output variables. Structured text. This is a high level language that uses sentence commands. Programmers can use if, then, else, repeat, and until commands to create programs. Instruction list. This is a low level language with functions and variables defined by a simple list. Program control is done by jump instructions and subroutines with optional parameters. And finally, sequential function chart language. This is a method used for programming very large complex control systems that use basic building blocks that run their own subroutines. 
Once programmed, the PLC will just do its job and run the process loop endlessly. But how can we see and monitor the process data as a PLC doesn't have a screen? We can use a human machine interface, a HMI. But what is a HMI? A HMI in its simplest terms is a device that allows you to interact with a machine. This could be as simple as a traditional single touch display mounted on a machine or an advanced multi-touch enabled control panel. How could a HMI improve your current system? From an industrial perspective, the most valuable aspects of HMI technology is the ability to closely monitor production. Also to be able to respond to changing production demands, which improves efficiency and decreases downtime. These benefits are a result of improved diagnostics and monitoring. Alarming is a great example of a HMI function that provides a visual indicator of a process issue and its severity. What are your HMI requirements? HMI solutions can be standalone terminal based or distributed for larger applications. Requirements for this type of system vary depending on the application. The display will usually include some sort of touchscreen functionality, as this makes a HMI much more user friendly. This kind of functionality is increasingly inspected on a HMI. Where can you use a HMI? A HMI can be employed in, an in, in any industry where human interaction with a machine or automated device is necessary. They are widely used in manufacturing, from the automotive industry to the highly regulated pharmaceutical and food industries. Process industries also heavily rely on HMIs, such as mining operations and oil and petrochemical plants. Many of their processes are managed remotely from a control room. The level of integration and sophistication may vary, but the HMI can be added to just about any type of application. How does a HMI fit with the new Internet of Things technology? Traditionally, HMI solutions were standalone, isolated terminals that were installed by an equipment manufacturer as part of a machine. Newer HMI solutions are pre configured to send data to either the cloud or to an on site centralized location. As the Internet of Things equipment infiltrates a plant floor more, HMI technology will play an important role in connecting people with their devices. For that reason, it is imperative that HMIs can easily be networked with other components on the plant floor. As I've just mentioned, centralizing cloud-based monitoring, look in, look, let's look at how this is all achieved. Supervisory control and data acquisition, SCADA software, is normally used to centralize all of a plant's control system, whether this is performed on site or in the cloud. SCADA system software allows manufacturers to collect and analyze production data in real time. It allows them to monitor and manage alarms and program automatic control responses triggered by certain events or system parameters. To perform these functions, the SCADA software integrates with sensors and other measuring devices to collect data. The collected data is then sent to remote terminal units or programmable logic controllers to be translated to usable information. Finally, the information is relayed to either a human machine interface or other types of displays for operators to analyze and interact with. SCADA systems also enable the ability to automate the control of industrial processes and machines that would otherwise be too complex for manual human control. Through the use of sensors and measuring devices, SCADA systems can detect abnormal parameters or alarms and automatically respond with, program, with a program control function. For example, if an alarm occurred signaling too much pressure in a line, the SCADA system would trigger a program response to open a pressure relief valve to, re to return the pressure levels to a normal value. Some of the most popular SCADA platforms currently used are Factory Talk, WinCC, Wonderware, and Ignition. Each of these platforms can be programmed with modern web languages such as HTML, Python, or PHP. 
They are also easily integrated with, da with databases software such as SQL. Now, we need to ask, which industries would use a SCADA system? Food and beverage processing, water and wastewater management, building management systems, oil and gas processing, utility backhaul providers, sorting and fulfillment distribution centers are to name just a few. Energy use monitoring and metrics is now becoming a major application use for SCADA systems. Here, the SCADA system can help business owners analyze energy use data and use that data to cut costs and energy waste. I hope I've given you a small insight into modern factory automation and its importance in today's marketplace. I'm sure you've heard for the last five years the claims that the fourth industrial revolution is coming. Well, it looks like the difficulties that COVID-19 has caused this year has really brought this idea to the forefront of producers' minds. As in the World Economics Forum's Future of Jobs 2020 report, 43% of businesses surveyed said they would reduce their workforce due to high tech investment over the next five years, meaning that automation is going to play a much bigger part in all our lives. Going back to my imaginary factory, we have gone from a basic manual process to a fully automated process line. But what if we had to increase this to two lines? Without any connectivity in place, these lines would only be capable of running independently of each other. There would be no sharing of information about each line. For instance, daily counts of products produced would only be available for each line. Each line would have to request its own raw ingredients. Machine downtime would only be monitored by each line. Raw energy costs would only be monitored on each line. And what is more, all of these figures would need to be manually collected every day. In conclusion, we would need to integrate both lines into a SCADA system. The benefits of a SCADA driven system is that it can give you instant notifications and automated responses to system process alarms. It can facilitate data driven decisions, lead to increased output, reduce costs, and give you greater control of your processing, including reduced equipment downtime and waste product. Thank you for watching.